Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Heal Talk with Lisa. Today is a different concept. It is an interview, and I am so happy to welcome Christine Sosa to our platform today. Hello, Christine. Hi, how are you? Wonderful. So thank you for all of you being here. It's, uh, it's a gorgeous day outside. I don't know where you are, so hi, Adrian. Hello, Maria. Hi, Maria Cosette. Maria! <laughs> hi, honey. <laughs> so, isn't this great? Awesome. Being live and having everyone here. So good to have you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Well, we're starting a whole new thing with uh, Lisa interviews. We're doing uh, real talk and inspiring stories. There we go. So, when I met Christina, I was inspired by who she is, what she does, and what she does for who she does, right? <laughs> you sound like Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, oh my <laughs> God, I haven't thought about Dr. Seuss. Why? Um, this is not a children's program. I'm raising two kings. <laughs> well, perfect intro. Would you please tell us a little about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm a working mom. Mm. I'm married with two kids, nine and six, and I work in the tech industry in the Silicon Valley, specifically in large enterprise. Wonderful. So you're stationed or you work in San Francisco area, Bay Area all the time? Yeah, so my, my job is global in scope, and okay. so I have counterparts and customers who are based in California but have you know, offices, business, or um, interests globally. So if you, you think about technology and the digital economy, everything is global. And so in, in my role, I definitely work with our counterparts and cultures globally from EMEA to APAC, Latin America, and certainly in the States. It's a lot of fun. Beautiful. And when you, uh, that means you can be remotely connected the tech industry nowadays and you can be on your phone and everything and still be connected. So what is your role? I know you are uh, one of the executives, the marketing uh, executive, but what exactly is marketing and sales and branding? Everyone talks about <laughs> branding, right? So what is it that you do in the company and what do you, how do you identify a brand? Sure. So I work for a company called Equinex okay. and I'm on their sales team. So not on the marketing team or the branding team. We have an amazing team that focuses on that. Okay. But I um, work within the enterprise sales team. And so the company is called Equinex mm -hmm. and our kind of tagline is connecting everyone everywhere. So we own over 200 data centers globally okay. and all the, not all the fiber connectivity, but a lot of the fiber connectivity, the underground sea cabling that sort of creates a connective, connected world and enables enterprises to do, you know, exactly like what we're doing to right. go live and have this stream globally. And we can have people watch this real time from all over the world. And so in order to enable that kind of experience, and have us all be connected. There has to be infrastructure and connectivity and all sorts of networking that right. supports that. And that's the team I work with in. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, something like that, I this is truly not a sexist thing, but to me, it's a, a man's job. Or when we think about technology as a man and everything, what brought you to where you are today? You know, I think that life is a, is a journey and people mm -hmm. who know me well hear me talk about water and sort of the flow of water and the different ways power, you know, water can be powerful or very soothing. Right. And so for me, I've always been very inspired by people and relationships. I love putting things together. I love solving complex problems and sort of getting to the heart of the matter and take an approach that's pretty broad, but also very deep. So this kind of fun thing of vertical and horizontal really looking things from different angles and for those reasons sales strategy business development things that enable growth mm -hmm. 
have always been something I've naturally been attracted to. And so I think sales and sales strategy has always been kind of how I've, how I've flowed. Okay. I love when I work with my clients, I love using metaphors. So it's beautiful how you brought the water and the deepness and horizontally. So it's like the waves in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess once you know how to sell, um, you can be at any level at any company and still do the same thing. So it's a mindset in a way. Absolutely. And I think it has to do all about connecting with people. I mean, my grandmother is 97. She turns 98 less. In, in a few weeks here in late December. And She's always selling. It's just her personality. <laughs> she, she often doesn't know that she is, and she doesn't know who she's selling to or why, but just she has this instinct and heart and, and, and mind um, that's beautifully braided together. And so her natural aura is just to bring people and things together. And oftentimes, what is she selling? Is, uh, it, you know, right now, nothing. <laughs> Her, her children, her grandchildren, and her great grandchildren. She's promoting them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sales. She is. She's constantly, you know, she sits outside and watches the kids leave from school, and she just Aww. is always greeting people and saying hello and and a nurturer. She is. Yeah, beautiful. Do you think all women are born as a nurturer, as a salesperson, as a connector? Um, so for me, it's difficult to say woman or, or, or male and sort of categorize things that way. I've always felt that everyone is born with certain yes. gifts and certain personalities right. and everyone has different um, abilities and skills that they bring to any situation. And the more dynamic we can be, the more diverse we can be you know, really beautiful things happen. I think the important thing is that we keep our heart and our mind open. Mm. So, you know, I've encountered women who are not very nurturing and men who are exceptionally nurturing. And I, I just think it's all about how you perceive things sure. and, and how you choose to sort of respond to those, to those things. But, you know, I've, I've seen it go both ways. Okay. What are the challenges in a high executive level that, or the diversities that you have encountered or overcome? You are so sweet. I'm not an executive. Oh, to me, you are. But you're so, you're so complimentary. <laughs> um, you know, I think everyone faces challenges. That's just a part of life. It's a part of every day. Every day we wake up and challenges present themselves to us. I think it's all about how we choose to either respond or react to them mm -hmm. and how we choose to learn from them. So, you know, is it challenging being a female in tech? Sure. But I don't know that it's any more or less challenging than being a and an psychologist or an attorney or a neurosurgeon or a heart specialist True. or a fashion expert or a business owner. Right. Yeah. Um, but how does Christina deal with? challenges I love them I okay. you know honestly because that's when I learn mm. that's when I can really take a step back I adore feedback my boss knows this my teams know this I ask them for feedback I ask them for real-time feedback so that we can look and analyze things together to learn and improve I uh, think that feedback is a huge gift and sometimes you know it's the f word that has a bad rap but I really, really embrace feedback and I ask for it regularly. And people who take the time to give me feedback, mm. it, it kind of tells me that they care. And I, I really, really appreciate that. So it's beautiful. I think it's a learning opportunity. I usually say uh, no one does anything by themselves and there's always someone who has guided you supported you holds your hand in one form or another right who's been the most inspirational person in your career or in your life um i don't know that i can call out one specific person mm -hmm. you know certainly my parents and my family have been huge guides and sort of beams of light in my life my my grandmother for sure my my brothers my kids believe it or not my husband 
Um, I'm a huge fan of mentors. So I'm very lucky to have several mentors that I can call on at any time, even if it's for a quick 30 seconds. Hey, this is going on. I just really quickly need your opinion. Okay. Um, what do you think? So for me, seeking that sort of mentorship and guidance every step of the way so I can course correct is, is important to me. And okay. I feel very lucky to have over the years created a network of friends and family that I can, I can really count on. And I hope they would say the same about me because I think that we all sort of help each other along the way. And you have been a coach. You have coached. So when we, I want to segue into you coaching or being a mentor yourself. Yeah. Uh, please share a little bit about Sure. That. So I'm, I'm not a formal mentor. I haven't done any sort of certification, but along the way, you know, I started working when I was really young and I started to notice that people would kind of come to me for things that, you know, relationship, work Why advice. not? You're so pleasant and <laughs> knowledgeable and lovely. Yeah. So, you know, I make myself available those opportunities just like other people made themselves available to me and I learn from them as much as I feel like I guide them but right now I think plus or minus it's about 10 to 13 people that kind of I've said you have me on speed dial and if you need anything feel free to reach out generally though about once a quarter we'll do kind of formal touch points but they span anything from relationships, careers, buying a house, buying a car, wow. whatever, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I work with a lot of millennials and right. I have a total open door policy. And so it's, it's um, I think, important to have that open door policy because we work so much. And sometimes we're at work more than we're at home or we're right. traveling. And so having that relationship where we can kind of blend that personal and professional um, kind of needs, I think, creates for a more productive and more successful team. Beautiful. Um, talking to certain organizations that I know, their leaders or uh, like the president of a company, when they talk about millennials, they're saying that millennials are fast moving. Uh, they know more. They're very technology savvy. And yet they want everything right now. The answers have to be there. And the work ethics that the old traditional way uh, is customized is not there. So is it true? I, I have no understanding of the millennial because my business is more of one-on-one -on -one and group yeah. right now. I mean, I think that if we, if we look at it from a business perspective, right. the way we think about or the way I would maybe consider a human resource executive for a large company, their role within an organization is changing mm. because people are working differently. We have more access to information. We have more global access. You know, we're walking around sometimes with two, three, four, five, six devices in our purse and our backpack. You have your laptop, your iPad, your cell phone. <laughs> And so, and connected in here, you know, this, this concept of Monday through Friday, nine to five is it's completely changing. Um, you know, I was on a conference call yesterday at 8 PM, 9 PM and 10 PM hour time in California with Japan, you know, so the whole way we work is changing. And so, you know, people are working remote more. There are people who are up all night and that's when they're at the peak of their their game. So to the extent that enterprises and companies can embrace these sort of different work modalities and open floor concepts and by, you know, remote work, remote working remote or working from wherever, so long as you're available, I think that's definitely a big shift. And so HR functions have to be a little bit more strategic. Beautiful. Because you, you don't have, like I said, this Monday through Friday, nine like to five. What you did today, you said, I have that thing on timer and Instagram. And I'm like, what timer? <laughs> yeah. And, and the resources are evolving. There's constantly new technology coming into the, the fold. So what is the next trend? What are we as our audience, my viewers, uh, looking forward to seeing? 
I mean, I think from a big perspective, you hear a lot about AI technology, artificial technology, artificial intelligence, okay. sorry, <laughs> no, sorry, artificial intelligence and AI, you know, blockchain, not just cryptocurrency, but blockchain for industry um, is becoming a big trend. There's a lot happening in automated cars and, you know, data centers moving, you know, very high tech, mini data centers going into the trunks of cars. Even businesses are becoming like this. We work big open spaces and everyone having a station working not right yeah so yeah. there's a lot you know a lot is it of a cultural thing happening is it a cultural thing yeah i mean is it americanized or is it global what technology this uh the millennial the working the connections and everything is it everywhere i mean i think to Broad strokes, yes. I mean, I was recently in Armenia for WCIT, and right. the share the, it was share amazing. Them. It was absolutely amazing. But yes. the energy, the opportunity, the ability of these recent graduates to embrace technology and be on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. There's such a huge tech startup community in Armenia and such an infusion of capital that there's a lot of really amazing up and coming technology, you know, that's truly coming not only out of Armenia, but everywhere. And okay. so this, this desire to be innovative and relevant and, you know, do cool things and kind of be on the forefront of, of these things. It's, it's a lot of fun to see. And it's Beautiful. been particularly fun for me to observe how Armenia is evolving because I went four years ago, two years ago, and just got back a few weeks ago. It's a big difference it's in the last difference. year. Yeah. Yes. It's it's really, really wonderful and inspiring to see this sort of fluffiness. Can I use that? Fluffiness. Lightness. Lightness, you know, this huge beacon of hope. And it was it, it, it I think we will see a lot of really, really amazing things coming out of Armenia. Well, I think there is uh it's a generational thing and companies need to conform. Yes, yeah. it is true. Yeah, true. I think Maria makes a very valid point. Yes, you can see better. I, I can't see that far. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, Maria and I talked about this a little bit too. She's doing a, a PhD in this, she's in this amazing. space. She's, she's, she's amazing. She's a rock star. You, should... you are amazing. We're talking, I mean, you're, instead of a third person, I know your life. So you are amazing in all the things that you do. Uh, as an inspiration, she is an inspiration. I think that there are so many leaders within our community that truly are an inspiration for us to look up to. And you are one, she is one. With that, can we talk about a little bit uh, with the women's organization, sure. the International Women's yes. Organization, uh, about um, Ms. Uh, Feroyan? No. The Feroyan, yeah, Anahi Feroyan. Oh, yeah, who was, who was just featured. Okay, featured, yeah, 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 right. And she talks about how she loves giving, yeah. the philanthropy of giving and helping. In a way, I think culturally, we have learned from uh, my grandmother being the part of the genocide and everything that when we come together, we conjugate together, we have we give yeah uh grandma would wake up in the morning and open the door and talk to father and close the door and she would always have her door open there was no time that you would go to her house and it was not either food time dinner time coffee time yeah so what does the true mission and the vision of that organization stand for yeah so i'll, I'll take a quick step back and anahid is amazing She's yes one of the stars um, and a member of Awa San Francisco. Okay. And once a week, she gives food to the homeless. So right. in, I think, the 15 or 16 years she's been doing this, she's probably fed, you know, a quarter of a million people, which right. is amazing. But Awa International, the Armenian International Women's Association, was founded just under 30 years ago in Boston. And oh, the, wow. the founding mothers, if you will, saw a gap in the the dialogue that addressed topics that were you know particular to women and their families okay 
And so now that's evolved. We have global affiliates um, from Boston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and I oversee the San Francisco chapter. Okay. We are exceptionally well positioned for big growth. So if you're not a member of AWA, please go to awainternational.org and become a member. We recently got a new executive director, Rachel Najarian. So I don't think she's listening, but a <laughs> uh, uh, shout out to we her. We can tag her. Yeah, out yes, outstanding definitely. leadership and sort of vision to really elevate the organization and and take it to the next level. So okay. it's it's a very, very exciting time. But the mission really is to create a space that connects and empowers Armenian women and their families Beautiful. globally. Beautiful. Um, I know none of us have an IAN last name. So it's so unique that we're now talking about being a part of the Armenian organization as a woman, as a leader. Yeah. Uh, so many don't know that I am Armenian uh, because of the last name, but it is, I, I think it's a diverse way of looking since the time that after the genocide, we came to America, Long Island, and being in Fresno. So we are so diverse and yet very much connected. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, being in Armenia for WCIT really yes. exemplified that because we had Armenians from all over the world. Oh. Hong Kong, L.A., San Francisco. Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just everywhere you know, Argentina, France, and it was Beautiful, so, yes. you know, kind of impactful. At one point, I kind of took a step back, I went to the far corner of one of the events, and you go, wow, like, there really truly is this huge Armenian diaspora mm. that's all over the world, and so successful, so big-hearted, so yes. big personalities, you know, we, we, we joke, but we didn't sleep for 10 days because there was so much excitement, you know, having all these Armenians from all over the world kind of connect. It was, it was very igniting. Beautiful. What is one book that has made a difference in your life? Are you serious? I, I read nonstop. <laughs> yeah, but um, usually there is a book that we got. But you know what? This book made an impact. So I, I read a lot, but yeah, right now, so <laughs> um, there's a book called The Black Swan that I've sort of been passing out to everyone. Okay. It was published in 2007 by a brilliant Lebanese writer, and he sort of talks about uh, perception, he talks about randomness and different random things that happen, um, you know, both from a macro and a micro perspective. Okay. So that's my that's my big plug right the now. The black swan. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I will note that. I will give you a copy. Thank I literally you. Have several. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have uh, rituals or tokens or something like that that you usually keep around? Like glitter. <laughs> Is glitter your thing? <laughs> Um, I don't, I mean, I have rituals in the sense that I like to keep my mornings relatively calm. So I tend to wake up much earlier than most people. Which is what? Stockbroker sign? Three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I really um, enjoy the sunrise and the sunset. I tell my husband all the time that at some point in my life, we just need to live on the ocean or by the Malibu. water. I, I love watching you know, sort of that morning fog go away. And I think it's a beautiful metaphor to not knowing what the day ahead mm. looks like and, you know, the sun rising and you have this day to embark on really cool things that can take you to different places. And then the sunset, you know, usually sunsets are relatively clear and, you know, throughout the day, whatever fog was lifted, you get clarity and you sort of say good night and end the day. So I've, I've come to really appreciate sunrises and sunsets. Mm. I take baths. I, I have tons of robes. I have glitter and sparkle everywhere. You take bath? Uh-huh. <laughs> How many of you take bath to just me time, right? I like to call it a me time. Bath. But, you know, we live in a really busy, dynamic world. And so, you know, you can't really take your phone or any technology in the bath because you'll die of electrocution. 
Right. So, you know, I, I throw all sorts of stuff in the bathtub. Tea bags, salt, oils, candles. No one bothers me. It's dark. It's quiet. <laughs> it's my time. It is. And I, you know, I think it's important to have that time. I, I do quite a bit of yoga. So whatever it is that just kind of keeps you grounded. I take my kids to yoga. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, when I work with my clients, I say, I help you evoke what was, embrace what is, and evolve to what will be. What is it that you are inspiring to evolve to? What is next? Since oh, we well, talked about evoke, evoked a lot, we embraced who you are. And now, how do you evolve to the next level? What is the next level for Christine? That's a great question. I, I'm not too sure. I, I think that when I look at all the pieces that I've been putting energy into, mm. like being a working mom, I hope that that can continue to sustain and, and grow. Um, I often say I haven't come this far to only come this far. So I think there's definitely some great things that await in that realm. Um, when I look at sort of the efforts of AWA, I think there's a lot of really wonderful things that I hope to be a part of as AWA grows and does some pretty special things that sadly I can't talk about just yet. Okay. But stay tuned. Things are coming and be, become a member. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm very lucky to get to work for a company like Equinex that sort of um, celebrates and supports. and supports working moms and philanthropic efforts. So actually, while I was in Armenia, Equinix sponsored Beautiful. a lunch where we invited the 32 female speakers that participated. So I think as if, if, if I can continue to build on the blocks of the foundation that I set, then hopefully something cool will happen. But I don't have a crystal ball. Did you have a crystal ball or did you have a wish or a dream as a little girl? No. No? Mm -mm. Okay. I know. I'm. I probably wasn't the typical little girl. I didn't dream about my wedding. I just wanted to do. <laughs> I wanted to have fun. I wanted to do really, really awesome, extraordinary things with extraordinary people. See. And so I. That's setting intention. Yeah. So you know, I'm pretty picky about who I hang out with, and I consider my dearest friends to be like family, and my family to be like friends, and beautiful. You know. Yeah. cherishing that part I do it's, yeah. I feel very lucky to to have uh, such an outstanding network of friends and family and that is celebrating life and a celebration of life I think universe gives us back what we hold dear yeah, yeah. I actually have a friend who, who once told me that she wrote a paper or a blog presenter. She did something about how I think about toasting and, you know, <laughs> you know, being able to toast and celebrate life with people, whether that's, you know, water or milk, right. um, wine or champagne or whatever it is, just to be able to toast and give off those blessings. I've exactly. yelled at so many people who toast and put their cup back down. Like, oh, no, 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 Toast, you must you have drink. to take a sip. <laughs> yeah, so I don't do. want to tell. You're, you're spot on. You know, I love life. I love to celebrate it. I, I you are a celebration, my dear. <laughs> and I am so grateful for you taking the time and being here, being present. Um, is there any questions? Thank you for all the emojis. I and hope this was fun. beneficial. If there's any questions, do you mind if we can take some questions? No. I, all right. You said real talk. So what real are talk. Um, Let's do any questions. Liana Gregorian, yay. Hi, Tallinn. Uh, is there any questions we can ask? You can ask questions of me. You can ask any questions from someone. Someone's got to ask someone or else this is just going to get awkward. <laughs> someone please ask something so she doesn't feel awkward. No. Or you can ask me a question. If I can ask you a question. Hmm. Let me see. Yes. It's not a question, but if you were to complete this sentence, would you please finish this? Um, Christina is? Christine, me, I am? Christine. I am is. the 
biggest celebrator of life. Ah, uh, and uh, in the, I, I think it's the Jewish, the word I remember. From Mazel Tov? No, L'chaim. Oh, L'chaim, yes. L'chaim. <laughs> Mazel Tov, L'chaim, Genaz, Genaz, Cheers, Cheers Salamati, Eriorsi. Uh, what other languages do you know? In Japanese? I don't know how to say it in Japanese. Do you know how to say it in Yasu? Japanese? That's Greek. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> that's that's what happens when what you know. What do you recommend people? for young women to get into the tech industry? Oh, um, good question. It's a great question. So I think it depends on which sect of tech you're looking at. Um, but the way I would start is just to go to networking events. There are girls who tech. There's uh, girls who what is it called again? There's a, I'll, I'll send it to you, Adrian, but there are so many different organizations that women can get involved in. Um, in the There's Silicon a tech Valley. week that happens in Glendale, and there is a lot that happens on that tech week. Yeah, there's the Glendale Tech Week. Right. There's the big watermark conference for women that happens in the Silicon Valley. Um, I think this year it's in February. Obviously, if you're Armenian, there's the, you know, WCIT and sort of the tech ecosystem in Armenia. You can ping different females. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to do a Beautiful. exploratory call. You can ping me. I'm happy to, to chat with anyone. Um, if you're a young woman who's still in college and you want to get into tech, a lot of companies have different internship programs that you can participate in. If you're newly out of college, there's all sorts of different events. So I would probably start there and then I'd start to ping uh, women or men uh, in the in the in your network that currently work in tech. So with that in closing, I thank you. My pleasure. So I think there is no other questions and I want to celebrate this moment and having you being present now that you are here. Uh, thank you for all the emojis and the messages and the comments. And if it is a replay, please hashtag us with replay and we'll uh, respond to the comments. Sure. You can see the comments as well. And with that, we thank you and I will see you next week. Until next week, God bless you and may the universal light be with you. Bye. Yay, this was fun. Aww. Thanks for having me be your first person. Of course, my <laughs> first person. I love that. <laughs> this is great. So we're still on. Isn't this great? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you and good night.